Okay, now I'd like to explore more complex data structures. And what I mean by that are combinations of arrays and hashes put together. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to make a person. So I will create a variable called person. I will have a key of first name. Let's call her Kelly. I have a key of last name. Her last name is Miller. And now I want to represent her hobbies. Now, since Kelly has multiple hobbies, I am going to use an array as the value for the hobbies key. So yes, just like you can use integers and strings for keys and values, you can also use arrays for a value as well. So Kelly's hobbies are cricket, baking, and stamp collecting, because that is the ultimate hobby. So this is a little bit more complex because it is a hash, and one of the values within this hash just happens to be an array. Let me show you an interesting technique that can allow us to visualize this data better. In Ruby, you're actually allowed to do this. So this is the very same data as before, but you're allowed to use new lines to structure it like this. This allows us to visualize this better. Now if I wanted to print out the person's first name, of course I can do as follows. And that prints Kelly to the terminal. If I wanted to print out Kelly's hobbies, I would do that. What if I only wanted to print out her first hobby? What would I do then? Well, since person hobbies returns this array, I can simply put after it the index of whatever hobby I want to get. So person hobbies zero returns cricket. Person hobbies two returns the string stamp collecting. Because again, Ruby processes this from left to right. Ruby first executes person hobbies, which immediately returns the array. And then we call the index 2 on that array, which in turn returns the string stamp collecting. Now, let's put a hash like this within an array. So we'll end up actually having an array within a hash within an array as follows. And let's make room for this. Okay, let's see what we have here. We have a variable called people. People is actually an array, as you can see from the square brackets here and here. It is an array of hashes. So just as an array can contain strings, integers, and other arrays, an array can also contain hashes, because an array can contain any class of object. So this particular people array is holding three hashes. This is the first hash, separated by a comma, then we have the second hash, and a comma, and then finally the third hash. Each hash represents a person, which is why in the aggregate all three of these hashes are an array of people, and that's why I call the variable people. Our first person is Bob Jones, our second person is Molly Barker, and our third person is Kelly Miller. So this is actually a reasonable and common setup of arrays and hashes because it makes sense. We have a list of people, so that would be an array. Each person is represented by a hash. Since each person has a list of hobbies, their list of hobbies is an array. Again, this is complex but not difficult. 